What's up guys, welcome back. Making the switch from talons back to power pole blades. Let me show you how to get them installed. We got a couple goodies to go along with them. Um, we got the Russell Marine anchor light, the foot switch here. We got a couple products from Ashmore Marine products um, for cable management. And we're gonna be installing um, the jack plate brackets with the braces as well. I'll show you how to get all this done. Let's jump right into it. Not gonna spend a whole lot of time on what's actually in the box, but when you flip it open, this is exactly what you're gonna see. I haven't touched anything in this one yet. So you get your blade, of course, packaged very nicely with thick foam, and then you get three smaller boxes inside the big box with uh, along with a package of paperwork down there in the corner. In those three smaller boxes, this is what you get. This is all the stuff that I took out of the other blade that we already got unpackaged. So you get your blade, the side covers over here. That's one of the last things we'll do. You get a couple bags of hardware. I'll show you everything in there, that, what's needed for what. You get a, a bag with your remotes and lanyard. You get a bottle of your hydraulic fluid. You get your pump bracket or brace, the pump itself with wiring. And then again, that packet of paperwork. Make sure you go through the paperwork. There's some decals in there, but also your registration your, or your warranty card. Um, the installation instructions, of course, as well. Um, but if you watch this video, you're not going to need them. I'm going to show you everything you got to do step by step. So let's get the jack plate um, brackets on and then we'll move on to mounting the poles themselves. For the jack plate brackets, again, I went with the braced option. That's what this extra piece is. If you don't get the braced option, you'll only get this piece. If you're not sure what bracket you need, you can go to Power Pole's website. They do have a bracket finder. All you do is type in your year of your boat, your make, model, that sort of thing, and it'll tell you exactly what brackets you need. Very simple to do. Or you can just contact, I got my poles through Hydrilla Gear. Um, he was awesome to work with. I believe his name is Rich, I think, um, but he was awesome to work with. He made sure I had the right brackets and everything. So, all right, but that's basically what you're gonna get. Um, the main bracket, the braced option, if you get that. And then, the starboard side is over there. Now to know which one is starboard or port, I'm not sure if this is gonna show up in the video, but it's engraved in the brace right there. The last letter, P, that's for the port side. The same thing is engraved on the bracket itself and the brace. The other set has the S at the end for starboard. All right, so if you're not sure what side goes to what, just check that last letter. You also get two bags of, actually, I'm sorry, four bags of hardware, two that look like this and then two that look like this if you get the braced option. Okay, this is actually gonna be to attach the pole to the brackets. So we're gonna set the smaller bags of, of hardware aside. So these two bags we'll just set aside for right now. We're gonna be focusing on the bigger bag of hardware. Let me show you what's in there and what we need to use. In the bag of hardware, one is not open yet. I just took one of them, opened it up. This is everything you're gonna get. So you get five bolts. They're A, B, C, D, and E. Very simple to tell apart. You just go from biggest to smallest. And when you look at everything that comes in your pack, they actually have everything pictured for you to make it simple. Um, you really can't screw this up. Then you get one square washer, two fat washers, two skinny washers, and two nylon locking nuts. So what you have to do, um, these are labeled A, B, C, D, and E. And then the square washers F, these are G, these are H, these are I. If you're, don't worry about it, it's all labeled in the thing. I just want to kind of show you what you have to do real quick. You have to find, in the book that comes with the brackets, you have to find your jack plate. There's all different types of jack plates in the instruction manual. We have the 8 inch TH Marine Atlas hydraulic plate. So we go to this page and it shows you down here in the corner what bolts that we need to use. So we're gonna be using D and E as far as the bolts, and then we're gonna be using the square washer, one of the thick circle washers, and the two thin washers. So I'm gonna take the other fat washer, the other three bolts, set those aside. Of course, we're gonna need both nylon locking nuts. Everybody's gonna use those. Okay, and if you look down here, and I'll, I'll go over this a little bit better when we're installing the braces, but down here, it'll tell you D is gonna go into the braced slot, E is gonna go into the unbraced slot, F, it, it tells you exactly where everything goes. This will make more sense when you see me actually do it, but I just wanted to point it out, they really do lay it out well here in the installation manual. You really can't screw it up. So let's get these on the boat. All right, to get it onto the jack plate, we have, we have two holes right here and here. Now, usually there may be an Atlas decal right there, but I had talons on here with brackets, so it's already uncovered. If you don't see these two holes and you have the Atlas jack plate, just take that decal off, decal off and you can't miss them. They're the two bigger holes. All right, so we're gonna take the bracket and the brace. 
we have our bigger of the two screws that we're going to be using again make sure you have the proper screws for your jack plate not everybody's going to use the same hardware we're going to pop we have the, the square washer on there as you can see we're going to pop it through the brace and the bracket and we're going to get it started in that bottom hole now this will obviously help and be easier if you have a second set of hands but we should be able to get this done and the other thing too, a little tip, I raised my jack plate all the way up and I have my motor tilted, which gives me a lot more room in this area here to work. So then I'm gonna take my thin washer, put it on the back of the bolt, take my nylon locking nut, and just get that started. These are three quarter inch, just so you know what size ratchet and wrench you need. All right, so we got that started. So then we can let it go. That'll be supported. We'll grab the other bolt the shorter one, pop it through, and same thing. Skinny washer on the back, nylon locking nut. All right, now don't worry about this end because again, that's where the power pole um, is gonna mount to it. So there's other hardware we're gonna use for this end. Now that we got both of these started, I'm gonna, I'm gonna snug them up, but I'm not gonna make them too tight because as you can see, it's meant for this to be able to slide up and down. I wanna get both of them on here and then I'm gonna have to see it, what, what exact height I want them at before I actually snug them down to uh, the proper torque. So I'm just gonna take my three quarter inch ratchet and wrench and snug these down. All right, so we got brackets and braces mounted to both sides, tightened down to 80 foot pounds of torque um, and basically, I'll put a picture on your screen to show you where I'm starting out with height wise. Once I get on the water, we may adjust it up or down. I'll let you guys know. I'll keep you posted on that. But I'll put a picture on the screen of where we have them at right now to start. So as you can see, we already have the port side pole mounted to the bracket. In order to do that, very simple. It does help to have a second set of hands. My son helped me out with this step. Um, this is the hardware kit that comes with the poles themselves. You are not gonna use this unless you're going directly to the transom of the boat. If you're going to a bracket like we are on the jack plate, the brackets come with ba a bag, smaller bags of hardware. These actually come with the brackets, not the poles, okay? And it says right on it, it's the adapter plate kit. Now, if you notice, mine also says braced because we're using that brace option. In this bag, again, you get two bags, one for each side. In the bag, you get four nylon locking nuts, four flat, they're kind of thicker washers, four bolts, and then four of these other washers that look like this. They're rubber on one side, not on the other. So when you use these ones, you take the bolt and you take the silver part, the silver side, that goes toward the head of the bolt. So when you're looking at it, the rubber is now facing away from the head of the bolt, okay? You line the pole up. Again, I held it, my son started the bolts. You just line the pole up, pop them through this way, and then you take the fatter nylon, or I'm sorry, not nylon, the fatter washer, pop it on the other side, put on the nylon locking nut, tighten them down. Now these are 9 16 um, ratchet heads, just so you know what you're gonna need to do it. We did not tighten these all the way down yet. I'm gonna put the other pole on. We snugged them up to hold it in place, um, but I'm gonna put the other pole on, make sure they're symmetrical on each side, and I'll show you how we're gonna do that. We're just gonna kinda, I'm gonna eyeball them at first just to get them close, and then I'm gonna measure from the sides over here and just to kind of make sure they're exactly the same in the exact same position before we go any further so i'm going to get the starboard side pull on there with my son and, uh, and then we'll go from there all right so we have both poles mounted and secured to the boat I tighten these bolts down to 45 foot pounds of torque. I could not find the actual spec for them anywhere. Um, I didn't see it in the instruction manual. I checked online, I couldn't find it. 45 felt good to me. They feel rock solid now that they're tightened down to the brackets, everything feels good. But if somebody knows the proper torque, I, please feel free to leave it down below. I really don't know um, what the actual spec is supposed to be. 45 just seems like a good um, number to me with the size of the bolt. And again, now that I have them tightened down, everything does feel rock solid. So I measured everything is symmetrical. I measured the, the, the distances from the edge of the brackets to the bolts. I stepped back and looked just to make sure it all looks good. Everything looks perfect to me as far as symmetry wise um, between the two sides and the two poles. 
Next step before we do anything inside the boat with the pumps or running wiring or anything like that, running the hydraulic lines, you're just going to want to put the shrouds on. Um, comes in one of them three boxes that I showed you at the beginning of the video and obviously comes with two sides. I already have one on the inside here, but it just you just pop it on the sides like this and it just screws. There's four holes in it. You just screw it directly to the side of the pole itself. So I'm going to go ahead and finish doing this for both sides. Moving on to everybody's favorite part, drilling holes into the boat. Let me show you what I'm going to use here for the cable management for the hydraulic hoses for both sides. I got this product from Ashmore Marine Products, AMP for short. You can see the AMP engraved in the top. Um, he's got some good products. He's got a whole bunch of things on his website, so check them out. Um, but what these are for is when you drill the holes in the boat to, to route your hydraulic lines in, it's a three quarter inch size hole, just so you know. Um, what you can do is drill the two holes, obviously lining up with the two holes in his product, and you're going to feed the hydraulic lines through there. They feed through, and then the grommets that come pre-installed on the blade hoses, they fit right in there, nice and tight, really snug, and just kind of keeps everything nice and neat, looks professionally done, and uh, you know, it just helps with the install and helps keep everything looking good. All right, so that's what I'm gonna do. As you can see, I already drilled one hole here. Now, I'm getting kind of lucky, I'm not gonna lie to you. I have this non-skid pad back here. I put that there, I actually have a video on the channel showing why, um, to protect the gel coat from, before I had the motor side the the um the hose that whatever this is called the, the the hard plastic hose that holds all the cables it was scratching up the back of my boat so i got them i got the motor sock but i also put this non-skid pad back here that's where i'm actually going to drill my holes so i don't have to worry about like spider cracking or anything um i just popped on my three quarter inch hole saw went right through no problem at all and um but i just i'm pointing that out just because if you're gonna go through a spot where you don't have anything like this and you're just going through the gel coat just be very careful there's a technique to it so you don't get spider cracks or anything basically you want to start with a smaller hole kind of a pilot hole you go in reverse first to go through the gel coat and uh, then you can put the drill in forward and go through. Just be very careful, go nice and slow. I actually cover that technique in my video where I installed the LED, the Blue Water LEDs. So you can get a perfect hole, no spider cracking. If you have any questions on it, let me know and I'll see if I can explain it a little bit better. But again, I'm getting kind of lucky here. Honestly, I would even recommend, you know, if you go with something like this, even if you don't, maybe get a little patch of this non-skid stick pad or not skid pad. I'll put a link down below to the one that I got off Amazon if you want to check it out. Um, but it just makes your life so much easier when you're drilling, drilling through the gel coat. You don't have to worry about it spider cracking or anything like that. So I'm going to go ahead and get these things installed here. As you can see, I already have the one hole drilled. One, one of them is going to go here. And then the other one, I think I'm just going to go right below it. I'm not exactly sure. But let me go ahead and do that, and uh, I'll pick back up with you. Quick look at where we're at. So we have the hydraulic lines ran. And what I did was I took both lines from each pole, and I used this extendable sleeving. It's three-quarter inch. I'll put a link to it down below if you want to check it out. It's, I got it off Amazon, nothing special, but black and blue to match the boat. Comes in all different colors. So I ran both lines from the port side are in this one sleeve up. Now, I do have to clean the end of this up. I left myself enough slack where I can cut that off, clean it up with a heat gun or a lighter, and, you know, really shrink it down just carefully, obviously, because you're right around those hydraulic lines. But you can see where it goes into those two Ashmore Marine... Um, base plates. I really like those. The lines are nice and snug in there. They're not going anywhere. Um, and as you can see, the grommets fit in there really well. So the other side, we just have coming out, ran across. I used one cable tie right there and it's a Velcro one. It's not an actual zip tie. I like those Velcro ones because you can adjust them. And uh, so that's how we have all the, the hydraulic lines ran. As you can see, I have the two hydraulic lines from the starboard side in that cable or the extendable, the extendable sleeving as well. So let's jump up in the boat. We'll get the pumps mounted. I'm actually going to pull the boat in the garage real quick. We're getting a little low on light. We'll pull her in the garage, get the pumps mounted, and uh, the wiring ran to power. All right, we're ready to get the pumps mounted in the boat. Let me show you what we're doing here. So when you open up the, the pump boxes from the, the big box that you get the blade in, you're dealing with your pumps, your brackets, your mounting brackets, and then bag of hardware. So in the bag of hardware, you're gonna get this rubber sleeve. Looks like that. I'll show you where that goes. You get two battery um, connectors, which we're actually not gonna use because we're gonna go to our bus bar, um, but they do come with those. You get two fatter bolts that look like that. 
you get two of those washers that have rubber on one side and then they're silver on the other side and then you get four screws the four screws are what you use to actually mount the bracket into the boat so you have to find the location i'll obviously show you where i'm going to put mine and then put the bracket down you use these four screws to mount the bracket to the boat to mount the pump to the bracket you're going to take and what i'm going to do i'm actually going to loosely mount the pump i'm not going to tighten everything down but i'm going to put the pump on the bracket so what you want to do that this rubber piece that looks like this this is going to go in between the pump and the bracket okay and then you're going to take the two bolts the two washers that have the rubber on one side same exact thing that we did before the rubber is going to be facing away from the head of the bolt so when you put it on the bolt silver side goes on first so when you're done it looks like that okay rubber is facing out or away from the head of the bolt so then all we're going to do is on the back of the pump you see there are two holes here the two outer holes the two bigger holes they're the only ones that are going to line up so this is going to go up against the back of the pump we're going to put the pump onto the bracket here and there's grooves in the back of the the bracket you can see them there that's what you're going to go through to mount the uh the pump to the bracket so i'm just going to get this loosely attached both of them so we can go over to the boat and get them set down in where they're going to go so i'm just going to kind of hand tighten the two bolts here in the back and one thing i'll mention before you even go into the boat pick out a spot that you want to mount these and then do what i just did loosely attach these just hand tighten them in the back and actually take it into the boat set it down make sure you like where it's at make sure you have good clearances and uh, everything is ready to go so we are now ready to take these into the battery compartment and uh, let's get them mounted up coming down the home stretch let me show you what we did here you could obviously see where we're going to mount the two pumps that one's already mounted and i'll show you a couple things i did off camera just to save a little time so as you can see i have the bracket and what i did was i took the four screws that you can see um on the bottom of the bracket and that's how i secured it down to the boat now i didn't want to drill any more holes in the boat a lot of people just mount these right to the fiberglass in the back corner or wherever there is no right or wrong you can easily do that but if i can avoid drilling holes into my boat into the fiberglass i'm going to what i did was you can see the two screws on the left and i did this on both sides the inner screws the screws closest to the battery um is right down into the black I think it's HDPE material. It's like a, it's like that harder plastic material. So I secured two of them down into that. The outer screws, because there wasn't enough room to fit the whole bracket on the black, what I did was I had some white HDPE here in the garage that I use for a different project. Um, I, I got it in like a 12 inch by 12 inch square uh, big block. It's a half inch thick. Now you can get this in all different thicknesses. What I did was I took two half inch pieces um cut to a perfect square you can't see the whole square because it's down it's underneath this side you might be able to see the white edges sticking out from underneath it but i took two um squares i cut it down on my table saw made sure they were perfectly symmetrical you know lengthwise and widthwise epoxied them together and then epoxy them down into the boat rock solid doesn't move um, I'll put everything links to everything I used including the epoxy down below the video for you if you want to do a similar thing But now this way I have my those four mounting screws into the HDPE and not into the bottom of the boat I don't see any issues with this. I've done similar things before It's very sturdy very solid and I avoided drilling holes into the fiberglass So now all I'm gonna do um, is we're gonna take the two bolts that i showed you with those rubber with the washers that have the rubber facing out and we're just going to get the pump into position now before i did this the other thing you're going to notice is i've already filled it with um the hydraulic fluid and there's there's very faint lines on the side of the container of the reservoir i took a sharpie and i'll put a picture on your screen in case you can't see it here but i don't know if you can see the sharpie marks down there just much easier to see from up here um i put sharpie marks on the side of the containers of the reservoirs so that way i can always tell if i'm if i'm in between the minimum and maximum line if i have to add anything or or you know whatever the case may be okay so i did put the hydraulic fluid 
load in there before I put the pumps down in the boat just made it easier. I put them at the max line and you'll see why once we prime the pumps, you're gonna use some of that fluid to prime the, the not the, um, I'm sorry, to, to prime the hoses, um, you're gonna use some of that fluid. So I did fill it up all the way up to the max line, both sides before I put them down. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take the bolts. And again, we're gonna use that rubber gasket. I'm actually gonna take the rubber gasket and put it up against there and pop the bolts through that gasket. And if you can't see this, I apologize, but it's, it's very simple. I'm sure you guys know what I'm doing. I'm just putting the bolts through the, through the bracket. And now, hopefully you can see, I have the two bolts through the bracket and then through that rubber piece. And now I can just take the pump, line it up with the bolts and uh, hand tighten them. And then it, these are 9 16 inch, um, I'm sorry, a 9 16 ratchet as well to tighten these down. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. And then I'll tell you what I did with the wiring um, to give them power. We'll prime the pumps and we'll wrap the video up. The other thing I did off camera and before I put the pumps down in the boat, just to save time again on the, on the video, the, I connected the hydraulic hoses to the pumps. Very, very simple to do. Wasn't really worth showing. Um, when you take, when you uncover the two nozzles on the pumps themselves where the hoses connect to, they're gonna come packaged with these two caps on them. The blue cap is the up slot or the up connection, the black cap is where you're gonna put the down hose or the down connection, okay? The, the hoses themselves come with these coverings on them. Don't take these coverings off until you're ready to actually connect them to the pump, that's very important. These are basically just a protection to make sure you don't get any dirt or debris in the hydraulic hoses coming from the blades. Um, so don't remove these until you're ready to connect them to the pump, okay? The coverings, they kinda, they basically, color coded to make sure you don't screw it up. So the, the hose that had the blue covering went to the up spot on the on the blade. So on the upside, you can see the up arrow right here. That's that's the connection that had the blue cap. So again, the blue covering, the hose that had the blue covering on it went to the connection on the, the pump that had the blue cap. Very easy, blue to blue. The other side, the down hose that had the black cap on the pump, that has a red covering on it. Okay, the other way, you can't really screw this up too because the hoses themselves, I don't know if you can see it on camera, but there's writing on them. Um, it, it tells you actually in that writing, it's somewhere on the, in the writing it says up and down. Okay, so you really can't screw it up. I just wanted to point that out because I did connect them off camera just to save a, you know, a couple minutes in the video. Now, as far as how tight you make them, all you're gonna do is finger tighten them. And then once they're finger tight, you go one quarter turn past finger tight with a five eighths inch wrench. Okay, and when you're when you're putting them on the connections there, just make sure they're perfectly vertical onto the nozzle. You, you, you won't be able to tighten them if they're not. Um, so just don't force them, get them perfectly straight up and down on the nozzle on the pump, and uh, you'll be able to finger tighten the threads on the hose. And then again, one quarter turn past finger tight with a five eighth inch wrench. All right, so let me show you the wiring real quick and we'll get them primed up. Running the wiring is very simple on these. So off, e off of each pump, you're gonna have a black and a red, a positive and negative, obviously. The positive looks like this, comes down. Now I did shorten this um, just because I want as little wiring back here as possible. It looks like a mess right now. I have to zip tie and clean everything up. If you guys follow the channel, you know I'm really anal with that stuff. But anyway, I did cut out a section and then just reattach it using a weatherproof buck connector and some red heat shrink tubing. So it comes down into a 40 amp inline fuse that looks like this. Out the other end, you have a little pigtail, it's 12 gauge wiring. That's where you're gonna put your ring terminal, okay? This other pump looks the identical. I did shorten this one as well. You can see the connection I remade there. So you have the inline fuse and then of course the ring terminal. So all you're gonna do, you're gonna wanna run your pumps to a switch. Um, these blades don't draw a whole lot on your battery, but they do draw some and they will go into a hibernation mode, I believe after a certain amount of time. It's just best to run these to a switch, make it nice and easy on yourself. At the end of the day, when you're done fishing, turn the switch off, kills the power to the blades. You don't have to worry about them drawing anything off of your battery. So this is the switch that I'm gonna use. It's a main battery switch, looks like this. It's just simple, on off. Um, I've gotten questions on this thing in the past or similar switches, they're very easy to use. If you turn them around, you see two studs. 
all you're gonna do is connect your ring terminals from your, your pumps to one side. So we're just gonna pop one on that side. And I'm just doing this real quick just to show you guys, but you'll pop, pop both of the ring terminals on one side. And then of course you take your, your washer, put it on there, screw your nut on to hold them down tight. And then on the other side, this is the side that you're gonna run to power. Now you could either run this side to direct to the positive on your battery, or like I'm gonna do, I'm gonna run a piece of 12 gauge wiring from this side over to the positive on my bus bar, okay? Um, don't use any smaller than 12 gauge wiring. I may even use 10, 10 or 12 is okay. Just don't go any smaller than 12 gauge on these on these main battery switches, um, just because it, on, on the pumps, it's a 12 gauge wiring. So I'll probably just use 12 just to match it, but just don't go any smaller than 12. All right, guys, so it's, it's that simple. Just take your positives to one side, and then on the other side, you'll need, you'll need some 12-gauge wiring, of course. If you don't have any, you can pick some up out, uh, on Amazon. I'll put a link down below to everything that I'm showing in this video, including some wiring if you need some. Um, and then again, just at the end of the day, turn the switch off, and that kills your, the power to your pumps. All right, so the positives, it's that simple. The negatives, the blacks coming off of the pumps, you're just gonna you're just gonna take these to ground. So you can run the blacks either direct to the negative on your battery, or again, I ran my negatives over to the the negative on my bus bar. Um, it's that simple. Okay, um, don't overthink the wiring. It really is that easy. And then these switches, these I like these because you can just mount them. I'm gonna mount it right down here. Um, I have a spot right underneath there, underneath my relays for something else um, it's a perfect spot to mount this easy access at the end of the day reach in there turn it off kill the power to the blades all right um, you can probably see my bus bar i don't know if you can this 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 pump might be in the way but one of my bus bars is right down in there i have a lot of accessories ran to that just to try to keep it nice and neat back here the other thing i like about these these inline fuses that come like this is let me see if i can pop this off there. If you look at it, it has this little flag on it, a little flag coming off the side with the hole. That's for mounting. So once you get this connected, you get your switch mounted permanently to the boat, you can then take your inline fuse, grab a little screw and stick it right to the back in there. Again, just to keep it nice and neat, nice and secure. Um, I, I do like those inline fuses that have that little tag to secure them. All right, simple as that guys. So both reds to a switch, like I showed you, the blacks to the negative on your bus bar or the negatives to um, direct to your battery. Um, that easy. All right, let's get these pumps primed up and uh, we'll hit the water. All we have left to do is prime the pumps. Seems very simple. All we're gonna do is supply the power. So I'm just gonna go ahead and turn my switch on. We should hear a chime. There it is. And then you're gonna take the dash remote, which is this one. You wanna go the top orange button. You wanna hit that until you're at the slowest speed. So you can see, there we go. So it's flashing slow, there's medium, there's fast. So we wanna go back to the slowest speed. Now it says to manually deploy the bleed. So I'm just gonna jump out of the boat and I'm just gonna put the anchor down by hand. All right, so I have the blade on the passenger side lowered all the way to the ground um, by hand. Now it says to take on the remote, press and hold the down button until these the two red lights stop flashing. It should take about 15 to 20 seconds, and you may hear some high-pitched noises you know, while it's purging the air out of the lines, but just press and hold the down button until those lights stop flashing. Okay, I'm not sure if you can see the lights flashing because I know it's pretty bright out here. And I apologize if the wind is blowing in the mic. I try to I'm, have it covered up the best I can. But um, once you do that, it says to do it a second time. So same exact thing. We're just going to press and hold the down button um, for another 15 to 20 seconds until those lights stop flashing. Okay, before we do anything else, they say to check the fluid level in your reservoir because again, you're priming the or the, the hoses. So some of that fluid in the reservoir is going into the hoses. So I'm just gonna take a quick peek at my Sharpie marks. And I am actually still within range. I'm closer. If you remember when I mentioned, I did fill these all the way up to the max line because I knew we were gonna use some. I'm still above the minimum line, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish the priming process, and then I'll probably add a little bit at the end when we're done, but just make sure you check that before you go any further. The next thing we're gonna do is now we're gonna do that with the up button. So we're gonna press and hold the up button until those lights stop flashing. 
okay? And it says you can do that again if you have to, but if your anchor is fully retracted, you don't have to do that um, any longer. Mine actually is fully retracted, so I'm not gonna do that again. So the next step is it says go to the medium speed setting. So we're just gonna press the top orange button once to go to the medium. And then it says to repeat the last couple steps. So we're gonna press and hold the down button and then press and hold the up button. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. So press and hold the down. Lights stopped flashing, so now press and hold the up until the lights stop. All right, so once you do that on the medium setting, they want you to jump out of the boat and see if you can manually deploy the blade like you did in the beginning of the priming process. So you're just gonna try to separate it and deploy it, and mine are rock solid. I mean, I'm pulling about as hard as I can, and they're not budging. Um, they're not separating at all, so that's a good sign. Obviously, it tells me, you know, we did everything correctly, and this side is primed to the best that, to the best, um, that we can do here at the house. There is one more step, um, which I'll mention here in a minute, but I'm gonna repeat this process on the starboard side. We'll get that blade over there. I'm not gonna show that on camera, obviously. Same exact process to get that one. Um, primed up and then once you do that you're then ready to hit the lake when you get to the lake to finish and complete the priming process and the whole installation they want you to go to water deep enough to where you can fully deploy your power poles without hitting bottom so I'm just gonna go to 15 20 foot of water and they want you to deploy and retract six times so lower them all the way raise them all the way six different times that will complete the installation complete the priming and at that point you'll be good to go if you have any further issues after that they say to contact jl marine um you know because there's a problem so um, but yeah at this point we're as far as we can be at the home i'm going to repeat the starboard side and then we'll hit the lake to finish the process again i'm not going to show that on camera very simple you're just go to water deep enough put them down and raise them up six different times and you're all done with the installation so Hopefully this helps you guys out. I'm gonna do the anchor light and you know pairing remotes and all that stuff in a different video just to save a little time. I feel like this one ran a little bit longer than I wanted it to. Um, so we'll save that for save those other things for different videos. So you know if you're not subscribed, make sure you do. And uh, those those videos will be coming out very shortly after this one. Any questions, comments, or concerns, let me know. Um, don't be intimidated to do this if you if you want to do it, it's not hard at all. Uh, again, the video ran kind of long, but I'm hoping I made it very clear and you know helped out somebody who's on the fence about doing this themselves. It really is not hard. Um, any questions, comments, concerns, put them down below. We'll get them addressed for you. I try to respond to everybody, as you guys know. And uh, yeah, if I can help you out, let me know. Don't be intimidated. Get your poles installed and hit the water. All right, guys, let me know if I can help you. We'll talk to you on the next one. Take care.